I'm gonna try to survive 100 days in a cave-only world in hardcore Minecraft. Except this cave-only world has a bunch of mods added, including Alex's Caves, which adds tons of completely new biomes. I mean, there's a whole new dinosaur biome. How does it get any better than that? There's also this toxic cave biome in which you can find the new Cleeper and just, just look at what it does if you're not careful. Oh my God. Oh my God, run. Oh my God. There's a ray gun, rideable dinosaurs, submarines, and so, so much more. In these 100 days, it's my objective to adventure through all of the new biomes, gear up with various new items and weapons I can find, and to defeat the final bosses, including this absolutely massive sea creature, which is without a doubt the most powerful underwater boss I have ever seen. So everybody, without further ado, relax, grab your favorite snacks, and enjoy as I try to survive 100 days in a cave-only world. And now, my friends, it is time to live some life. What is that spider doing? More honey. Give me the honey. I love honey. Give me the honey. We are gonna, you know, be able to sleep in the nether. Hey. No. No. Come on, man. You can't be doing this. Hey, oh, this guy's looking at me real suspiciously. <laughs> what is going on over there, dude? It's an Enderman disco. Oh, go, go, go. Well, folks, I am genuinely excited for this one. And I mean, we have wood right off the bat. Obviously, to start off, I just, you know, I want to get some basic tools. Now, there is a torch here, actually, which I will grab because that's going to be a nice little lighting source for us. So right off the bat, we got a building here. This might be one of the Alex's Caves buildings. I actually don't know. Yeah, Alex's Caves. There we go. I know that these can lead you towards certain biomes. So it is actually very important to take all this stuff. And look at that cave compendium. Let's open this up. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Hidden beneath the surface of the overworld lies many unique cave biomes, all rare in nature. Of these biomes, five are known to exist. To uncover more, seek out an underground cabin. Now there is something going on here. Oh, here we go. Spelunkery table. But actually, I don't think we can use this without a piece of paper, unfortunately. Okay, in that case, can I like grab this with me? Yeah, I can. Now we do want stone tools, that's for sure. And I see a nice opportunity here with the cobblestone because all around us is deep slate. So I'm going to make use of this, folks. And I should be able to make all the stone tools we want. I'm very likely to die if I just go out. So we need to somehow strategically collect some iron. I don't know how that's gonna happen though. I guess there's uh, some iron underwater here, which is pretty nice given the fact that uh, there's no mobs around us. So let us smelt that up. Let's put that shield on. That's gonna be very helpful. And now my friends, it is time to live some life. What is that spider doing? We got a shipwreck here, which is cool. Paper. Protection for a leather tunic. Are you kidding me? Okay. Potatoes. Ooh, that's awesome. Now, I do want iron, as I mentioned previously. So, I think we should uh, try to get some of that. Okay, here's iron. Now, look at this. There's a bunch of honey here, which is pretty lucrative, actually. Uh, I'm gonna grab all of this because I'm pretty sure. Can't we make, like, um honey bottles with this? I, I, I don't know 100%, but I'm gonna take it anyways. <laughs> if not, I'll just use it for a build, you know? There are glowberries too, which in fact, I haven't been thinking about this, but we should be collecting as much food as possible. I don't know, let's try heading that way and hopefully scoop up some iron along the way, just like we got here. We're already up to 28 pieces, which is uh, very significant, actually. I think I have a good plan. What I'd like to do is, first of all, start smelting our iron. Second of all, I would like to start making use of the spelunkery table. What we can do is put in a cave tablet here, and you essentially need to do a decryption thing. The way it works is you press something, and then you can decrypt these symbols into letters. So if I look over here, it shows us what these symbols are in terms of words and then we need to find the word glue moth so yeah we just need to decipher this maybe here boom there we go and so i just have to decrypt two more times and then uh, we should get the item from this and it should be here boom dread and then we need one more word which is cult 
There we go, cults. And with that, that was the third word. So we got the cave codex, Forlorn Hollows. And if we right click it, that'll add it to the compendium. And now if we open it up, we have this as a section. The Forlorn Hollows is an underground cavern system engulfed with pure darkness. Almost no light shines here. Okay, so it essentially is a very, very dark area. Anyways, we can make a full set of armor. I do need uh, more wood to make our tools. And there's some birch here, why not? And with that, I can make a sword and a pickaxe. I think we should continue adventuring here. And diamonds, apparently. Hello. Are you kidding me? Diamonds already. I mean, it was only time before we found some since we are in a cave-only biome. Ooh, I see another diamond. Folks, I have no problem with getting full diamond early on. Absolutely none. I'm up to 19 diamonds. Are you kidding me? I will make diamond gear, though. I don't know if I'm going to stick with the protection for leather tunic. So, yeah, I'm going to make some diamond gear. I'm, I might regret this later if we find no diamonds, but right now we're swimming in them. What is that? Got some loot in here, including bread, which I need direly. Even an anvil, which you know what I'm going to take because that's a bunch of iron. And I guess our journey continues. More cave tablets here. Oh, and these are different ones. Look at that. Ooh. And more types of cave tablets. So I'm going to sit here deciphering these tables for a long time. It's, uh, it's not going to be fun. There we go. That's one. That took me a while. But if I right-click that, Forlorn Hollows, now when I click this, mm -hmm, I have another section unlocked, which is going to be very important. No, you're going to make me look through all of these. I think I might have done all of the ones needed for Forlorn Hollows. Yes, I did. So we got utilities. Oh, wow, there are, there's just a bunch of stuff here. That's that biome discovered, and I guess I'll do this with my other cave tablets right away. Okay, there we go, primordial caves. Oh, this one has all the dinosaurs. Okay, so that is now added to our cave compendium, and we still need to discover more about it, obviously, but that gives us an introduction. There's fly traps. Oh boy, ground is covered with moss and grass. Okay, look at those guys. should be the final one for the primordial caves so we can see everything about it now as you can see we can make like spears there seems to be something we can smelt smooth limestone a cave painting can be created oh i'm gonna do the final cave tablets we've got abyssal chasm covered by blocks of water found exclusively under ocean biomes. Okay, I think we are done with doing this for now. Uh, I'd like to actually start doing things again, but we did uncover some pretty important things here. So we have information on some of the different mobs, Deep One Mage. I do think it's possible to get even more info. I just don't want to sit here decrypting more of these right now. I would like to continue along with adventuring and progressing. Okay, I do have an idea. If we go to one of these places with a spelunkery table again, because I don't have mine, we can quickly use a tablet, get the encrypted codex, and then combine it with a paper to get a map to that specific biome. What biome do we want to get to first? We have the option between primordial caves, forlorn hollows, and the abyssal chasm. I think the most handleable place are the primordial caves. Okay, boom, primordial caves, and now, I should be able to just combine that with a piece of paper. Bam, there we go. And hold on, let's see. This is calculating, boom, primordial caves. Oh, there's a skulk biome. 
Uh, I didn't really think of that, but yeah, there probably are ancient cities in this world. So that's something we should watch out for. Now I know to you guys, it might seem like a waste to sleep the nights off when we're underground, but I've been getting attacked by phantoms. So yeah, it might be useful after all. I, I think I'm gonna need to make a bed. Wait, but hold on. Look what we found here, folks. Wait, now hold on. I don't know if there's actually gonna be villagers in this one, because there's like copper roofs. So I don't know if it's a regular villager. It is. Oh my God. Look at that, we got pigs. Amazing. So, I mean, this could kind of give us a place to base up, to be honest. Oh no, oh no. Okay, if we're gonna stay here, we should probably try lighting this area up. I used all my torches. Uh, maybe I can put some chests in one of these houses for now. This one specifically looks pretty decent. I'll make a double chest. I can also sleep for the first time. Hold on, is there a bed here? Oh, there's a bed. Villager, yeah, e get out of there. I'm gonna collect this wheat as well. Thank you. I'm going to turn this wheat into bread, and I think we should continue searching for that primordial cave, which should be closer than far away, because we've been traveling for quite a while, and we are moving a lot on the map now. Oh, I see it. I see it. This is primordial caves. Look at that. Oh. Oh, that's sick. This is where we need to start being careful, folks. This is, uh, this is no joke, okay? Um, hello? Hello? Are you aggressive? <gasps> are you not aggressive? You're not. Oh, th these are fly traps. Are they gonna attack me? I don't know. Ow, 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 oh, oh. Dude, these guys are not friendly, and they are very fast. Oh, yeah. It would take a few hits to take out, but... It's possible. Having some sort of ranged weapon would probably be helpful. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, um, so we found the biome. You know what? Now that we've done that, I'm very, very satisfied. And I think we should actually try to work towards getting that full diamond with enchants, as I mentioned. Oh, that's like a T-Rex, dude. Or a Velociraptor, whatever they're called, man. I don't know. Sci-sad. Primitive club. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait. The primitive club is actually a really cool item. I know about this one. I did read about it. It can stun mobs uh, with a chance, I believe. Okay, here's the plan, folks. Here's the plan. We're gonna get diamonds. We're gonna get bookshelves and we're gonna get uh the spelunkery table decipherings done by the way i wasn't able to look at what we can use fly traps for but it looks like you can make this seething stew and i feel like i remember this being the thing you need in order to tame the the like t-rexes or whatever the big dinosaurs the biggest ones you know dinosaur experts you guys can rip me apart in the comments i mean it i would honestly love to learn more about dinosaurs <laughs> Hold on, what did I just find over here? This can be a stronghold, could it? I'm, uh, there's no way. Okay, what's going on here? I hear illagers. So I guess the dreams of this being a stronghold are gone, aren't they? Hello. Oh boy, this is like a woodland mansion vibes. Um, uh, hello. Oh boy. Oh, nope, 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 I'm out of here. Gonna make a diamond helmet. We're doing good on diamonds. So much so that, in fact, I can probably get away with making a full set of diamond gear. Oh, looking good. Now I'm at 31 books, which is really good. We're just approaching 45 here. And with diamonds collected, that means that after we're done, we'll be able to start discovering more about the primordial caves, hopefully. Honey, give me the honey. I love honey. Give me the honey. I got a little bit carried away there. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, now I 
did decide to add something new to the pack. That is Alex's mobs. So yeah, there's going to be more mobs around, which I thought would add to the experience and also creeper overhaul. Um, and that just changes the appearance of creepers. Now, I don't like how many zombies are around here. I believe it is time for us to decipher more of these tablets, specifically the ones for the primordial caves. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, no. Were these all actual villagers? Clearly, whatever we've been doing isn't working. Um, I need to lock the villagers in their homes more. I guess, you know what? Once it becomes nighttime, they'll all go to sleep, and then I can trap them in. That's the only way we're gonna be able to prevent them from getting turned into zombies. Oh, is this one going to sleep? Yes. Anyways, back to deciphering tablets. Oh, after I sleep. <laughs> Let's see, will this add anything? Oh, there's nothing more to learn about this biome. Whoops, looks like I messed up. I just thought that there were empty pages here and then there were dot 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 here. So I thought there was more, but I guess I was completely wrong. Okay, let's see. Limestone makes up a majority of the stone of this cave biome. It can be worked into spears that deal low ranged and melee damage, yet are stackable. Limestone can be smelted into smooth limestone. If charcoal is used on smooth limestone, a cave painting can be created. Occasionally, when breaking amber, an amber curiosity can be discovered. These can be used to craft amber monoliths, which can also be seen dotting the primordial caves. Okay, so I think it's the, the glowing things. They can repopulate the nearby area of animals over the course of a few days. Interesting. Serene salad can remove the stunned effect when consumed and it can also be used to tame dinosaurs. The seething stew inflicts the rage effect which boosts damage depends on how much health is left. Heavy bone can also be used to craft the primordial helmet, primordial tunic, and primordial pants. When equipped, this armor set increases the health and saturation provided by consuming raw meat for each piece. Anyways, um, we need carrots. Aha, here we go. And with that, we can lead the second pig in and we can breed these folks. Very nice. And now we need to decide what we want to do next. I think we need to figure out our enchanting situation, right? So, I mean, I already have the books. I do need wood and also obviously I need levels like I mentioned. That's why I was thinking we could go into the nether cave only world and collect quartz there. That's usually a really good early game way of getting levels. Um, and if we're going to do that, I should probably start collecting gold so that we can make golden apples. By the way, I wonder if it's um, good to, you know, make a tree farm with oak trees somewhere near us so that we can farm apples and, you know, wood as well, obviously. Now, we have actual logs here that we can get. Maybe we'll just rely on adventuring to get ourselves um, some apples, you know? Oh, here we go, lava. Let's collect this obsidian. Okay, that should be enough obsidian. Okay, now that we've got the obsidian, we can make ourselves an enchanting table. And we should also get a flint and steel ready. Okay, there we go, flint. With that, we can make a flint and steel. And where do we want to place the nether portal? That's, uh, that's a good question. I kind of feel like this wall here kind of fits. Hehehe. <laughs> Looking good. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to head into the nether, actually. Um, as for our enchanting table, where do we want to place that? You know what? This is the library, so we'll put it right next to that. And I think that this is a good enough spot. There we go. And that should be a level third. Yeah. It is. Okay. With that, uh, I think we can head into the nether. Our main goal is going to be to get levels, right? So let's do it. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, you know what? With piglins nearby, I should get golden boots on. You know, some golden booties because otherwise I'm going to get plagued. And with that, we are more so nether ready, right? We are going to, you know, be able to sleep in the nether. Let's see. Oh, boy. Okay, so... Bastion remnant over there. Some kind of other structure over there. Hello. Oh, there's gold blocks here. Oh, there's also a wither skeleton. Wow, that was successful. Is there anything here? I just kind of walked right by it. Oh, <gasps> yeah, there is. Power two bow.
We got something else here. Oh, there's spawners. Well, we're gonna break the spawners. Oh no, 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 no. Gas, don't ruin this for me. Oh, run, 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 run. That piglin brute almost absolutely demolished me, man. Hey, no, no. Ooh, and I think I see a fortress over that way. <laughs> Would you look at that? We're in close proximity with so many cool things, man. What is this? It's kind of sketchy. Ow. Ow. Well, I can see how the block is made, whatever it is. Ow. Soul quartz. Soul forge. Soul quartz block. Ooh, that's pretty sick. Ooh, look at that. That's a really cool building block. There's also a lot of bone blocks. Gimme, gimme. <laughs> Come on, man. You can't be doing this. Oh, we got a little Valley of Netherwort here, which, um, I mean, I guess we can take that. Having potions never, ever hurts. Okay, I'm at level 33, so my golden boots broke. Okay, I'm back. I'm back, everybody. I'm back. Okay, so now that we have the levels, what do we want to enchant, folks? What do we want to enchant? Feather falling. I shouldn't have went for that, but I did. I mean, there's some really good perks there with the feather falling and depth shatter. If we can combine that with just protection for unbreaking three boots, that'd be pretty good. That's looking like a pretty good option. Efficiency for unbreaking three. You can't really go wrong with that. Blaze spawner. Actually, kind of convenient that it's close to the base. Okay, what can we get this time? Sharpness three. So I'm just going with the max enchantments. You know, there we go. Efficiency four. Unbreaking three. Oh, see, this is why you never go for the unbreaking three. Okay, well, let's enchant a few more pieces of gear and then we'll get to doing something else. gonna get this time sharpness four sleeping edge three pretty good okay power four bow just power four you know what at least that's something struggling to get protection four on our gear here really struggling there we go protection four protection three you know what i'll take it at this point we don't have the most powerful set of gear yet but at least it is something from here i think it'd be a good idea to get more diamonds so we can repair our gear properly i mean how many do we have right now only three i do have an anvil which is good news that can let us repair everything by a little bit and let's quickly find some diamonds. Aha! Gotta love our underground diamonds, our underwater diamonds, rather. And efficiency four is gonna help us out with mining these a lot faster. Oh yeah, here's a geode. So let's try to get uh, a piece of amethyst. Yeah, there we go. So let us make the repairs we want. Perfecto. Looking good. Now, with us being more powerful, we should be able to look into more of the primordial cave. Oh, hello there. Okay, here are the primordial caves, and we also got one of these guys here. We can ride them if we tame them. It can be tamed by feeding it a few Trilocarus tails. I wonder if this is one of the folks we need to take out. Oh, I'm going for it. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Both of them are aggressive now. Oh, bu 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 bu. you know what? I mean, I guess we could try making some potions. That would probably be kind of helpful. And we really should start trying to get a better source of food. Okay, let's see here. Collected bone blocks earlier. Very smart move by me. So we'll turn that into bone meal and I can grow us some carrots and potatoes because we also want to keep breeding the piggies. We will breed the pigs again and then we will start smelting these up like so. And while that's doing its thing, we can also do some brewing because I think that's gonna be very, very helpful for us. There we go, one minute 30 regeneration potions. I don't know how effective these will actually be, but I'm happy to give them a try. 
there are eight minutes speed potions and then we'll just make some strength ones so i got the potions made i guess not much else we can do i'd still like to make that club that stuns but we need like this heavy bone thing i don't know maybe we can find that on the ground somewhere is my guess but we'll need to take a better look let us head to the caves nevertheless Another time, I'm back again. Let's see if we can find anything sort of new around here. I'm gonna drink a speed potion just to help us out in case of, you know, anything randomly starting to chase us down. Okay, I tried to do a little bit of research. It's hard to really get a lot of info. I think the best thing to do is to fight one of these fellas. Oh boy, as it approaches me. And we should get some item drops that help lead us into the future. Ooh, like these. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. We will we will fight that guy. Just just not yet, okay? <laughs> Let's fight this guy right here. I've drank three of our potions. I'm kind of confident, so I'm going for it. Oh, okay. It hit me, but I can regen, which is great. Oh, it likes to tail whip. There we go. I got it. Okay, perfect. You can cook up the dinosaur chop, and then you can make seething stew. And then we have tough hide here, which can help us make primordial gear, which is pretty cool. With this, is that the thing that we can use to tame the flying guys? Because that would be sick, man. Let's see. How do we tame these guys? Trilocarus tails. Oh, okay. What's a trilocarus? Oh, what are these guys? Small prehistoric anthropods that can be found swimming in the any lakes. Is this guy gonna attack me? No, that's nice. But if I attack it, it will definitely attack me, right? Okay, hold on. This might be really dumb. Oh, yeah. Oh, so good. Oh, we got it. Okay, we're gonna get you out of here, sir. And I got heavy bones from that. I can also take this guy out. That's gonna give us the raw Trilocurus tail. Yeah, so with the heavy bones, we can actually make a club thing. Boom. Primitive club. Oh, yeah. Me and my... <laughs> look at how you walk around with this thing. Oh, look at that. There's a little spot here as I'm being chased. Oh, I shouldn't go down here, should I? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, double chest. Oh, hello. Dinosaur nugget. Like, do we eat that? We do. Amber, we'll take it. Pine nuts. Okay, you can make a serene salad with that. Not bad at all. I'm still searching for more of those little water guys, so let's do that, because I do want to tame myself the flying dinosaur. So much so that I'm just considering heading back and getting a looting sword. That would make all of these tasks that we're doing easier. So into the nether we go real quick, which I'm not necessarily excited for, but I'm also going to use speed, which uh, I'm liking speed, you know, having speed one for eight minutes. Great. Okay, back home I go. Whoa, this is pretty cool. This is some kind of a huge structure here. I mean, ugh, I guess I have to check it out. It'd probably be useful to have fire resistance going into this, but I mean, hey, I'm up for the challenge, okay? Hello, what is going on here? Oh, there's a very obvious trap, but it literally just has one arrow. Is that it? Oh, what if that was a fake trap and then there was the, the chest was trapped? That would have been pretty ingenious. Here's a chest. Doesn't seem to be trapped. More of the armor things. A looting three sword, which is pretty funny, but I think I'll just uh, make a diamond looting three sword anyways. Quartz, it seems to want us to put quartz in. How much quartz? Oh, there we go, look at that. Yeah, there we go. Bunch of emeralds, diamond, gold. Okay, I mean, it would seem that we kind of got to the end of this, so I'm just gonna mine out. We're gonna make a new diamond sword and we're gonna enchant this one for looting three. And then we probably will combine it with our other one, but uh, let's see what we even get. Luckily we can do re-rolls. So I'm just thinking we re-roll until it says looting three like that and boom. And we can also combine our swords. Bam, sharpness four, sweeping edge and looting three. I do reckon we should make some more potions because those were really helpful last time. Okay, and there are our swiftness potions. So I am all good in the gear department. I think we can now get those little guys uh, so that we can try to tame the flying animal. And here are some endermen, which I'm actually not opposed to taking out now that we have looting three. Ooh, look. 
look. There's like four of these little guys here. Very nice. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's stud. Go, go, go. Oh, it's getting demolished. Oh my, I just destroyed the dinosaur. Are you kidding me? I will say, however, that that is definitely not the toughest boss in this pack. Look at this. We got one of these like amber things really close to the water, which I want to check out. And we also got uh, a little structure here. Chest. Ooh la la la. Dinosaur nuggets. Whoa, a bunch of them. So I forgot exactly how it works. I mean, I know it's like a light source, but isn't there some other effect that it has? So it makes mobs spawn more often, I think, right? I think that's what it was. Oh, is there a golden block in there? Or what is that? Hold on. What did I just break? Oh, amber soul. Maybe this is the thing that causes more mobs to spawn. Well, anyways, we collected some of those materials, so that's good. Okay, I do think it's time to tame one of the flying fellows. Oh, I think this is like an amber monolith here. Look at that. Yes, it is. I need to read up on these again so we fully understand what they're doing. So, the place is well lit by ambersol, a novel form of amber that illuminates all blocks beneath it. It appears within amber clusters on the ceiling of these massive caves. Wait, so is it the case that amber isn't lit up by itself, but then with the amber soul it gets lit up? I see. I think that's how it works. That's kind of cool. Okay, here we got these guys. Let's see if we can walk up to one of them. Hello, hello. Don't fly away. No, don't fly away. There you go. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, best friends forever. There we go. Look at that. It's fl I'm flying with it. But hold on, how do I go up? Are we going to talk about the fact that my character is completely glitched? No. But also, why can it not pick me up, though? Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Oh, now it's picking me up. You know, I said that I'll do the dinosaur taming thing later. But in reality, if I do it later, I'll just never do it, okay? I've realized that about myself. We're gonna try to tame one of these guys, but we need a certain type of food. Let's see how we make that food as soon as I take this thing out before it attacks me first. So serene salad. I think that's what we need to tame it. Let's see what the ingredients for serene salad are. Tree star, fiddlehead, pine nuts, and a bowl. So we have fiddleheads and pine nuts, actually, but tree stars, we don't have. How do we get tree stars exactly? You know what? Tree stars might be like literally on top of her trees or something. Okay, so I did do some research. It appears that ancient jungle trees are the ones that can drop the tree stars, but I haven't been able to figure out what the ancient jungle trees are yet. You know what? I might have an idea actually, because there are the huge trees right here and they look like jungle trees, don't they? So that could definitely be it. Let's see. Oh, is it dropping tree stars? I think it is. It is. Okay, we figured it out. Good. So we just need to collect a good amount of these tree stars. Oh boy. Oh boy, please don't come at me. Okay, let me collect what we've gotten and let's get out of here. I think what we should do is return home, grab the other materials we need, and then leave this uh, fella at home because if we bring him with us, we do risk having it uh, die. And also, if we're gonna end up taming the Tremosaurus, we can't ride both of these guys at the same time. So it's just gonna make things easier, I think. Here we are. So we're gonna leave you to sit here, buddy. And should we give it a name? I think we should. We're gonna name you Piney because uh, there's pine nuts and I don't know, I just, I, I, that's what came to mind, okay? Piney, I think that's a cute name. And I've grabbed the materials we need. I just need to make some bowls. Boom, and if we combine everything, we should get the serene salad. There we go. Oh, they don't stack. Anyways, with that, we should be good to go. Okay, here we are. Look, we need to hit it with the primitive club and get lucky, but hold on. I should definitely drink our potions before we do anything. So I'm gonna drink a regeneration, a speed. The strength isn't important. But let's charge this club up and bop. Oh, it worked. Eat up. Ow. Okay. I got it with one salad, but that didn't tame it. Let's get it again. Huh. Oh, okay, every time you feed it salad, it cancels the effect. Hello, I'm making a dinosaur army. Ow, 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 okay. Uh, oop. Okay, still not working, come on. Uh, that worked. 
That didn't work. Hey. Ah. <gasps> it worked. Tyrant King. Tame a Tremorsaurus by stunning it and feeding it serene salad. Look at that. Okay, we need to charge Roar before actually shooting anyone with it. Oh, but okay. It just ate that zombie up. Get him. Okay, so whenever I attack with my sword, it actually attacks for me instead. And it just roared. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is powerful. Maybe we can make him sit here. Stay. Yeah, there we go. And we'll feed him some serene salad to heal him up. There we go. What should we name this fella? Do I even have another name tag? I don't. I think I want to name him Rocky. So we have Piney and Rocky. Okay, I'd say that was very successful. I mean, we probably could do more stuff in the primordial caves, but I feel like we've kind of defeated it. With that being said, that means it's time to move on to some new biomes. So let's see, we have the Abyssal Chasm. It's a water biome, so it's found exclusively under ocean biomes and appears as a massive trench where light barely penetrates. The trench walls are lined with Abyss Marine, a stone-like block. Okay. Well, to find it, we would want to make a cave biome map for it. So that's what we'll do. There we go. Abyssal Chasm. Or Chasm. And then we are just going to want to surround that with paper. And we've got ourselves a cave biome map for it. Boom. Let's generate it. Oh, <gasps> There seems to be a lack of this biome's presence in this area. Try traveling far away. Are you kidding me? No way you're going to make me do more work. Oh, no. Okay. The fact that this biome is far is a little bit concerning. Now, normally I'd like to make water breathing potions, but uh, the only way we can get puffer fish is if we use a fishing rod, I think. So I'm not, uh, I'm not too happy about doing that. Now there are ships all around. Maybe we can find puffer fish in there and night vision would be nice too, if we're going underwater. So I guess night vision I'll make now. Bam, night vision. And I guess we have to bite the bullet and go out and search. And I'm just gonna be spamming this cave biomap the whole time. <laughs> That's about it. Okay, I think I might have actually fixed the issue. I had to go into the config and change the way the generation works. So hopefully we will see some progress as I load more chunks here. Aha, there we go. Okay, instant progress, beautiful. I'm so happy to see that. No, Piney was shot by a skeleton. Oh my goodness. Okay, <laughs> next time, yeah, don't don't use Piney for long trips. What have I found here? I think I found a uh, the end portal. I did. Wow, that's. I mean, okay. Oh, here we go. I'm finally moving on the map. And yeah, this looked, whoa, dude. Look at this. Holy moly. I'm very far, like 11,000 blocks in total of travel um, from home, probably, you know, less. I don't know how many, but a lot of blocks out. Old breaker, look at this guy, 400 health. Oh my God. Gus Sammer worm, here we go. Large poly shady worms found swimming around the waters of the abyssal chasm. These drifting glowing worms are a favorite treat of the hull breaker. Gossamer worms can be captured with a bucket of water. If slain, they can drop bioluminescence, the source of their blue glow. Now here's the thing, we're so far Far from home that this isn't ideal. I was thinking we could make another portal and then we can travel between the two places that way. I'm gonna try to find lava. Here we go. And now we can convert this into obsidian and craft ourselves a portal. There we are. Look at how flat this is. Whoa. Oh, I just accidentally enderpearled. Okay. I think we might be above everything because we're at Y129 and I don't remember being that high up. I remember, in fact, we might have even been in the negatives. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is pretty cool. I can't lie. Anyways, I'm going to run back, which will only take us about a thousand or more blocks and we should be home. There it is. Whee! I used all my pearls, but that's okay. Subspace bubble. Use the nether to travel seven kilometers in the overworld. Oh yeah. Hey, oh, this guy's looking at me real suspiciously. 
<laughs> my thing is this. I think we really want a puffer fish. Now, actually, if I remember correctly, there is a lukewarm ocean where this abyssal chasm is. So technically, I believe puffer fish could spawn there. I guess I can take uh, the brewing sand with us and then we can throw it out later if anything. But this way we can just travel with all the ingredients needed to craft the potion we want. Here we are. I made it. Okay, that wasn't that bad of a trip. Okay, puffer fish. Yeah, so we've got the map here. We are in a lukewarm ocean. Technically, I could try going upwards and seeing if there's like a little ocean area up there. Okay, I'm in a lukewarm ocean biome now. Um, so, you know, theoretically, that would mean we can find puffer fish. Okay, I'm gonna keep looking for a bit, but good news, I guess, is I looked into it a little bit more, and it does appear there's a certain structure you can find that has like a like a submarine thing with some gear in it. So if uh, worse comes to worse, we can try to look for that place in specific. Okay, let's see. This is warm ocean, so theoretically, we should actually be able to find puffer fish here. Okay, not really anything out in here, so we can get out. Okay, so folks, after testing this biome, I unfortunately have come to the truth that the cave generation that I used with this world breaks the biome, the abyssal trench biome. So while some parts of it do spawn, and there are some monsters, including the final boss that can spawn, they only spawn in very small pockets of water, whereas the actual biome should basically be this whole thing in water. Now, I have a compromise for you guys and a solution. My thinking is this, we're gonna go explore the other biomes because there's still a whole lot more of insanely cool biomes to explore. And then after the 100 days is over, we'll do a little bonus segment where we will drop in to this biome in a new world, but with the same gear equipped and we will adventure through it. I think we should head to another biome that will actually work. All the other biomes work, I promise. Okay, back home. Feels nice, honestly, feels pretty nice. Okay, now here's the thing. On our cave compendium, we have the one more biome unlocked, which is Forlorn Hollows. Now, the thing about Forlorn Hollows is it has a boss that is maybe the second most difficult to defeat, if not the most difficult. And the most difficult would have been the Abyssal Chasm one, which has this Hullbreaker guy. But that means that this fella, the Forsaken, might be too powerful for us, right? Right now we might want to get netherite gear before we actually take him on then maybe some additional little items that we can get from the other biome so what i say is we hold off on this and we do that second to last and in the meantime we do these other two caves which we need to unlock the information for hello rocky oh by the way we can name rocky now rocky and we'll do all capitals it's very fitting yeah rocky there we go pal well other than that we shall get to looking for these cave tablets Oh, I just did some research. Okay, so here's that. For the Toxic Caves tablet, it's usually found within jungle temples, so we would need some kind of jungle structures. And then for the Magnetic Caves, they're found in bastions. Cave tablets. I'm not sure if we've gotten those. Yep, and there's paper. So let's see. Boom. Toxic caves. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. I'm so glad that we did not have to go to some crazy biomes to get this. Okay. So the green tablets are exactly what we needed, which means now, boom, we can discover toxic caves. Now, I'm pretty sure if we want to go here, we need to be really aware of the toxic 
aspect of this. So you need, oh, it can corrode armor or anything that enters. We're gonna need to figure out how to counter this. Oh, let's see, we need, probably it's called a hazmat suit, right? Yes, so we need to make a hazmat suit for which we need polymer plates. Okay, bottle of radon, toxic paste, sulfur, dust, and iron ingot. This is easy, but how do we get these three? Oh boy, bam, that's the final cave codex that we need. And with that, if we just make a crafting table, we can pop this in with paper and bam, we can generate the map. Oh yeah. Oh, and it actually generated. Beautiful. Okay. It does seem like it's actually taking us in the direction of our house, which is good news. So we shall follow. Okay. Back home, as I like to call it, home sweet home. Could definitely be doing better with the food department. So we're going to keep breeding our pigs. Hey guys, you know, you know, I do love you guys. Eat up. Eat up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yummy, yummy. By the way, we should make that uh, spy glass as well. Let me have a little looky looky. Yeah, here we got our amethyst. And then I did collect hopper. Beautiful. We can throw that in there. And then we shall use that to make a spy glass, which should hopefully be the basic recipe. Yes, it is. Okay. This is kind of exciting because this unlocks a whole new zoom feature for us. So let's see. I believe. Yeah. Now I can just press my keybind and it'll always work. Also, I can make some golden apples, which is really nice. Boom. Nine more. We have 12, which is a very good amount, actually. And you know what? I should make a smoker because this will cook things in times to the speed. Boom. And we can even move these over. Beautiful. I will say, folks, one regret that is on my mind is that we didn't make the primordial gear. Let's see how many pieces I can make, actually. Hold on. So I have the leather, I have the bones, and I need bone blocks. Okay. Okay, so with the bone blocks collected, we should just be able to make all of the pieces of the primordial set. Boom, boom, bam. And it appears there are no actual boots that come with it, but that's fine. Bam. Put it on. The boots take away. We have to take off the boots. Look at that. I look epic. Are you kidding me? I do reckon that we are good to go in the direction of the toxic caves. Oops, I should put my boots on. Okay, now we can go in the direction of the toxic caves. Let's go. What is going on over there, dude? It's an Enderman disco. Oh, <laughs> please forgive me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry for invading on your disco party. <laughs> We're okay. That was a bit haunted. More green cave tablets. There we go. I will decipher that right away. There we go. There's another one. It's another one. That should actually be everything discovered for toxic caves. It looks like it is. Oh boy. Um. Oh no. I don't know if I can make it through here. Okay, hold on. I don't know. I'm trying to sneak around. Please no warden spawn. Okay, looks like we're kind of going around the skulk biome. I do not like the sight of that at all. Yeah, we can go around this way. Go, 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 go. Shh. Shh, we're sneaking around. Oh, I'm moving on the map. Yes, that's always a good sign. We should be close, folks. Oh, I see a unfamiliar structure in front of us here. Oh, man, I see the hazardous biome. Uh, clearly, oh my god, hello. Whoa. Oh, dude, these biomes, man, they're so cool. Okay, let's see. I mean, we. oh boy, dude, I feel like I'm gonna make something explode, man. I need to read into the booklet a little bit to make sure that we're not gonna cause something bad to happen here. Hold on. And introduction. So let's read through this. So this is an underground wasteland that must have been created by the excesses of scientific hubris in ages long past. All that remains of this is an extremely hostile environment home to some equally dangerous hazards and monsters. Most of the terrain of the toxic cave consists of red rock and irradiated variant of stone. There are ruins of industrial and atomic progress they contain loot, uh, but venturing near them, them could also expose any adventurer to radiation by picking up some radioactive items, such as waste drum or uranium rod. Now, it looks like there are a few different things. <laughs> the new cleeper. Oh, boy. They're slow, and they take longer to charge up their explosive ability. This begins with the core of the creeper beginning to close, emitting a warning siren sound and bright, in, in bright flashing lights from its glowing green head. Uh, once the core of the creeper has completely closed, 
blows, an atomic explosion will appear and devastate the nearby area. For this reason, nucleapers must be destroyed before they close completely and create an atomic fireball. If slain before it reaches criticality, it can drop some gunpowder and occasionally a fissile core. Brainiac, oh boy. A monstrous mutant made of several zombies and other unknown monsters. Fast, aggressive, strong, and in possession of a large tongue that can whip targets from a distance. Once nearby, they can smash the target with their arms or use their jaw hand to snap at them. All of their attacks have a chance to inflict irradiated, and if slain, they drop Soylent Green. The Gamma Roach is a gigantic radioactive cockroach. It will attack anything that is irradiated. Oh, okay. Ray Cat. Please don't be stronger. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, it's like an undead cat. They heal by absorbing radiation from other nearby creatures. They can become tamed if fed radgills. Okay, so we would want radgills. Then it talks about the hazmat armor. Let's see, remote detonator. Can activate marked explosives from elsewhere in the world. Interesting. You can also make it into a ray gun. Oh boy. Okay, then there's some more technical stuff that like gives you a warning of an upcoming explosion, which kind of worries me. They can be used to create a nuclear furnace component. They smell items five times as fast as a blast furnace can. Oh my goodness. Nuclear bomb. You can make a nuclear bomb. Exploding all blocks in a nearby area. Oh yeah, deals thousands of damage. Oh my goodness. Maybe the very cause of the toxic caves itself. Oh, yep, there we go. We got an Anna. Okay, we got one of the guys already. Oh, they're fast too. Oh, they're licking me with their tongue. Oh, get away from me. Oh, get that out of the way. Yeah, this is not going to be a friendly biome, is it now? What is going on up in here? You know, that's my question. Here we go. We got a little crate. Uranium rod. So I'm pretty sure this is the stuff that can give you negative effects. Bottle of radon. This might as well. Gassed up. Bottle some radon from a geothermal vent spewing green gas. So I guess usually you would take this from the pools of liquid green soylent that can help us out slam that's a food type all of these food types are good because they can help us if we get the negative effects it would be great if we can get some of those fish because then we can get the cat tamed look at that cat dude oh that's a creeper Okay, I took it out pretty manageably, but I don't have an infinite amount of arrows, which is the problem. I might need to take a quick look again at the book here because how do we get the fish? Oh, they can, they leap into the air. They can survive in water. Okay. So maybe the point is that we have to carry the bucket with us and capture them midair. You know, that might be what it is. And we might need to turn this into a bucket of acid. So let's see. Oh, yeah, here we go. There's the fish, guys. Oh, I'm getting irradiation. Okay, that's not good. I'll be curious to see how that actually affects our armor here. I mean, okay, you know what? I think we should get to the other side of everything that's going on here. I'm being licked to death by this monster. Whoa, dude. There's two of them chasing me. Oh, no. I can't. I can't. Oh, I'm being... <gasps> what is that? That wasn't in the book, dude. I swear it wasn't in the book, was it? Oh my goodness. Oh, you know what, dude? That might just be an Alex's uh, a mobs. Mob, mob. I can't even talk. Oh, this is really a bad mix of circumstances. The, this is a rocky roller. I'm pretty sure that's what that thing's called. Yeah, there we go. I took it out. Okay, here's the deal. I think if we're going to go in there, we're going to want to get full netherite and uh, enchanted bow with infinity because the amount of ways we can die in that biome is just very unsettling. Now, since we're far out, once again, I think we can use the strategy of just creating creating another portal here and that way we will have a very close travel distance let's just uh, find some lava which shouldn't be too much of a problem there it is i think having additional armor toughness and also a ranged weapon that we can use with confidence will be really useful and i do hope that we can end up making that ray gun which by the way let's see what the ingredients were specifically two uranium rods fissile core and then this polymer plate stuff so it's actually not too difficult to make if I'm not wrong. Okay, either way, I'm gonna stick through with getting the upgraded items so that we don't have to worry about anything. Here we go, here's the lava. We shall mine this obsidian up. We can build the portal, bam. And we should definitely return home to drop off all of our items first because we are still carrying irradiation. Back home we go. Okay, I'm gonna grab an anvil just so that we can repair our pickaxe while we mine for ancient debris. Okay, I guess let's just mine downwards. It would seem
seem that everything below this area we are in is lava. So that's not a good sign. Maybe I'll have better luck over here. Nope, nope, no better luck at all. Huh, this is rather strange. I'm so confused right now. There's just like a thick layer of lava underneath of us. We might need to get some fire resistance potions and just dive into the lava itself. Here we are. Give me your magma cream. Ow, there we go. Eight magma cream, good enough for me. Okay, we're just gonna brew these potions up real quick. go fire resistance okay let's head back in and get some ancient debris okay i'm not gonna lie this is not promising there seems to be a very thick layer of lava like a lot thicker than i thought oh boy is that bedrock or did i just find ancient debris i'm kind of confused hold on this isn't great maybe i'll run around a little bit more and see if we can find a better area and if not i will just end up mining under the lava i guess okay this might be better here no <laughs> still not better huh i think i just need to accept reality that uh, everywhere is going to be covered with a layer of lava. So, you know what? I don't care anymore. I'm just going to mine under the lava. Okay, this is by far the weirdest nether I've ever experienced in my life. So I don't know how realistic it is to get netherite gear. But to be honest, I've been thinking throughout this process. I'm realizing, you know, why do I even need netherite gear when we have so many cool P armor options, you know? Well, I've got to say, we've had a lot of failures in a row. But, I mean, the good news is if we didn't have those failures, the victories wouldn't be sweet how about that okay now if we want like upgraded armor maybe we can do it with the primordial stuff but still we need more meat so i'm still breeding our piggies we have one escapee by the way but it is what it is at the end of the day i might just have to suck it up and you know go into the toxic caves without any better armor which i'm not excited for but i guess we should try to do that uh, i guess let's just go back to the toxic caves and try not to die Okay, we are now entering actual dangerous territory because I can't really predict everything that's going to happen with this biome. But, I mean, there's not much else we can do other than go for it, you know? I do. Oh, 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 here we go. That's the fish that we needed. Ooh, I didn't know they just fall out of the pool. Okay, so if we collect a few of those, we should be able to tame one of the cats. Hold on, I hear something. Oh, yeah. Ow, 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 ow. Oh my god. Holy moly, that guy was doing a lot of damage to me. Oh my goodness. And the problem is, even if I use a regeneration potion, I won't be able to heal from it for half the time. Oh no. Folks, th this is not looking good. Okay, I mean, I didn't think smartly enough, but the thing that could help is an infinity bow. I don't know why I didn't decide to make one. And there we go, infinity. Finally. And you know what could help us with all of the irradiation we're struggling with is a backpack because that way we can put the stuff in there. Maybe that'll help us out. We just need leather, which we can collect from hoglins. I don't know if we've gotten much. No, I don't think we've gotten any actually. Okay, well, let's quickly head into the nether and hunt some hoglins down so that we can make a backpack. Oh, and before then, I can definitely combine our bow into an infinity power four one. Bam. It'd be nice to get on breaking on this, but I'm not going to be too picky right now. Oh, hello. There we go. Finally, I'm finding these guys. I honestly feel bad taking them out, but I mean, I have no choice. I essentially just need to take out one more. Hello. Okay, uh, we're, we're good. I took out enough of them. Okay, with uh, this hoglin hide, boom, we can make leather. Then I just need string. And what was the final ingredient? Iron, which we most definitely have. And with that, I can finally make a backpack, which is actually a really, really nice addition. Woo, because look at that. We have so much more space now. I mean, with that, we have the infinity bow we set out to get, and we have the addition of a backpack. I think we are ready to head back into the toxic caves. Oh boy. Okay. I'm back. With the addition of the backpack and the infinity bow, I think we are going to be in a much better place. Like, I can just take this creeper out so easily now. So that's wonderful. Oh, thistle core. Oh, I'm, this is good. We can make the ray gun with this. <gasps> now, I'm going to put any stuff that I collect like that into my backpack right away. Now, here we have uranium, which is good. I did get irradiation. There's no surprise there, however. Uranium. So, uranium rod. We need those. Uranium shards. Okay, interesting. There we go. Fish fl flopped out. 
Oh yeah, perfect. I'm gonna keep collecting those. I'm gonna run into some of the structures. So it's time to fight these guys. Oh boy, I am starting to take damage. I don't like that. Waste drum, green soylent. See, green soylent is good. That doesn't even help me for some reason. Okay, 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 it's okay. I'm gonna drink a regeneration. Let's see if that works at all. Nope. See, regeneration literally does not work. Oh my goodness. This is dangerous stuff, man. Oh, look at that though. I just found hazmat boots in there. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Spelunky, I'm pretty sure that's just a food that can help us out. Oh, the little guys drop uh, toxic paste. I didn't realize the bugs do. And I mean, I'm sure that said that somewhere in the book, but oh, okay. Now I figured it out, finally. I will drink up our speed. That should be helpful in this biome. And now we can look for more of these bugs to hunt. Another hazmat piece, that's nice. And I am getting some food, which I guess can hold us out for a while. Okay, like it or not, we are running out of food. So I'm going to head over there to get out of this biome. Maybe even into this direction and hopefully i can find at least something that can hold us off for a bit since i definitely don't want to have to run all the way back home again here's honey so if i find more bottles i guess that can kind of satiate us for a while okay in that case can we find sand anywhere here that's the real question. I do see like red sand over there maybe. So let's check that out. Here we go. It is red sand. Let me take that. And now I just need to make a furnace. Or find one in a structure like that. There we go. Glass is smelting. Okay, boom, glass bottles made. And with that, we have a food source. Beautiful. Now I genuinely need to make an additional shield because mine's about to break. And while I'm sat here doing this, I believe we do have enough ingredients to actually make some of this plated stuff. I just need iron. Oh no. Oh, okay, let's see if we can collect some more real quick. Okay, we'll set that to smelt. I will make my shield. And while that smelts, I guess I can collect a bit more iron. Why not? Okay, let's see. So we can take all of our ingredients. And I'm going to need more bottle of radon because... Yeah, we can... Oh, wait. Each time we do it, we get three. So that's actually not a bad amount at all. So yeah, we just need about 13 more which isn't bad at all. We can get that done. Ow. I have two pieces of hazmat gear, but I don't know how effective that's going to be. Let's see if my irradiation wears off. Nope. It is not wearing off. Probably due to what we're carrying in our backpack too. So you know what? Maybe we should put it into a chest so that we are guaranteed not carrying around any additional items. And then we can pick it up when we're on the way out of here. Okay. That's everything loaded out of our inventory let's go for it unless wait can i just get it by doing this nope i cannot what if i walk up to one of these oh yeah there we go bottle of radon okay we got it i did not even need to go to a structure to get them how nice is that with that we should actually be able to make a full hazmat suit let us see sulfur that iron okay and then we combine all of these ingredients together beautiful and 15 so I can make the chest plate and I can make the helmet. Bam. So with that, we have a full set of this gear, which is completely unenchanted, unfortunately. It would also be really cool if we can get that ray gun made. See, we just need uranium rods and then we have the fissile core and polymer plates. Ow, I would just need two more of the plates actually. Go away. Oh, I still get some irradiation. I think it's probably for less of a duration though. I look sick by the way. Okay, boom, bottle of radon. So that's all we need for that. And then we need two uranium rods. You know what? Now that we have made the hazmat gear though, maybe what we wanna do is get it enchanted with protection. And that way we'll have the benefit of the prevention of irradiation and the decent armor amount. Yeah, I say we head in the nether, get levels again and get this hazmat gear enchanted. So I can even leave some stuff in the chest here because we'll be back. Okay, the mining begins. Okay, 40 levels. That should be enough. So I will now head back home. Okay, let's enchant this stuff. Boom, protection four and breaking three. Beautiful. That's a great way to start it, but I'm not seeing what I want to see. Protection four. There we go. This gear is about to become better than my actual gear. Holy moly. Holy moly. Okay. We just got a full set of protection four hazmat gear, which uh, I am more than happy with. Okay, let's, uh, let's get back out there, folks. I mean, I've got some pretty good gear now. Hopefully that's going to help us out. 
right, another day, another time trying to make it past a hazard environment. So let's do it. There's more fish, even though to be honest, we don't really need any more. We can probably tame more than one cat. So yeah, I think we should try to find some of the cats again. I've kind of lost track of them. Unfortunately, I am still getting irradiation. So I don't know how we can prevent that. Yeah, okay, it lasts for much less, which is very, very good sign. Now, we wanted to find some uranium rods so we can get the ray gun. So let us do that. They should be found somewhere in one of these buildings. Let me also look into this. So there's a nuclear bomb. Okay. For this, you need two fissile cores, which is easy enough. Block of uranium, easy enough. Honestly, all of these things are easy enough. Now, I would like to use a nuclear bomb before the end of these hundred days. Just not right away. Here's what I say. I say we get the ray gun, come back, get the materials for the bomb, and then move on to the next biome. And then, of course, at the end of the hundred days, we can explode a nuclear bomb. Anyways, two uranium rods, easy enough. And then... And the plates, right, which I don't have, but we can make, and th that means we have all the materials required to make the ray gun other than the blaze rod, so let's just get that. Anyways, let us craft two uranium rods, and then combine everything to make a ray gun. Look at that. Hold on, there's a bat here. Oh! Oh, the bat just got demolished. Wait, how do we charge this thing? Oh no, I'm not quite sure. They require uranium rods as fuel. Ah, okay. Interesting. So then we would need more uranium rods to really get a good amount of use out of this. Now what I'll do is I'll bring relays rods with us and we can make some more fuel. I also need more iron and we will go collect the required materials to make a nuclear bomb. <laughs> okay. I'm back. Look at this guy. He's already trying to kill me. No, sir. No, thank you. Okay, it takes a lot of hits. Holy moly. Kind of wish I could enchant this ray gun or something. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Enderman. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, no. Look at this green Enderman. It's a mutated Enderman. Oh, my God. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, boy. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, this is not good <laughs> already. So the main things we needed were those fissile cores, right? Which uh, isn't too hard to get. We just need to take out the creeper thingies. And I'm not gonna carry any extra stuff. Oh, here we go. A little creeper action. Let's see if it drops a core. Oh, it did. It actually did. Okay, good. That means we just need one more of those fissile cores. I kind of want to see what one of these guys' explosions look like, but I'm also pretty scared. There we go. I already got another fissile core. I mean, oh, we'll need one more for the remote detonator. But other than that, we just need uranium rods. And uranium rods just require uranium, iron, and a blaze rod, right? So easy enough. I can mine this up real quick. <gasps> oh, I see a cat. I see a cat. Did I bring my fish with me? No, but I do have a couple and we can find more. Hello? Oh, it worked on the first try. Yes, the Ray Cat solution. Okay, here we go. Another fissile coral. It seems like these guys drop it every time. But anyways, with that, I mean, I don't really think there's anything else we need. By the way, another thing we still need to do is head into the end. So we should not discount that because that can probably provide us with a bunch of new items. And you can stay here because we don't want you dying. You know what? We will call our cat Ray Ray. She will be named Ray Ray <laughs> because she's a Ray cat. I think that's fun. Ray Ray. There we go. Ray Ray. Hooray! Yeah! Okay. Cool. Very cool. I don't have any... Do, do you eat rotten fish, Rocket? No, you don't eat rotten flesh. Oops. Did I just make you sit up? I hope not. No, we're good. We're good. We have some nice pets. Okay, let's see if we can craft this atomic bomb real quick. So, we'll make some uranium rods. A block of uranium. And then we basically just need blocks of iron, which I am out of. I don't have enough iron. Okay, now here's the thing. I've been wanting a fortune pickaxe for a long time. With how much we're doing, I would love to get fortune on our pickaxe okay that's that's the, the long story short let's go get enough levels to enchant a fortune three pickaxe okay mining time very fun very fun <laughs> okay 31 levels that should be enough fortune three here we come boom diamond pickaxe 
And let's get fortune. Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. Perfect pickaxe. Oh yes. Okay. So that solves that issue. And now I'm going to quickly head out to grab some iron. And you know what? I'm going to do it on Rocky. Is this the smartest idea? Absolutely not. Here's iron. Rocky, you know, I give you the ability to do what you want. All right. Yeah, scare him off, Rocky. Oh, Rocky's amazing. Oh, look at Rocky go. Oh, there's a spider. Oh, no. What am I going to do about a spider? Ha, ha, ha. Loser. Oh, my goodness. Oh, get demolished. Oh, wait. Wait, Rocky just fell on a spider. Oh, all right. Good job, Rocky. Okay, I do have two stacks of iron, which is good enough. But that was uh, way more fun than huh? I could have expected. Oh, and I am two people. Okay, we're back. That was the most intense mining session I've ever went through. Since we're on the topic of gathering materials, I will also grab wood because I'm constantly running low. Okay, a couple stacks of logs should be good enough. Okay, now we want to go to the magnetic caves, which might be possible. I, I'm not 100% certain if we've gotten the cave tablets necessary, but we can have a look here. So far, it's seeming like I literally only have one of these. I thought I had more. Okay, well, in that case, I guess let us decipher it. And if it is indeed a magnetic caves tablet, then we will just instantly turn it into a map. So boom, boom. And I'm going to quickly decipher this. Boom, magnetic caves. Okay, so it is indeed what we thought it was. I'm going to make a map out of it. Bam. And hopefully there's one nearby. Oh, yeah. And there we go. You know what? I'm going to be smart, though. And before I leave, I will bring potions with us just for our protection. Okie dokie, some potions brewed up, let's go get this done. Wait, I might have just had a genius idea though. You know how all of the maps seem to point really far away? Well, if I just go through the nether, it'll make our trip go way faster and the map still works in the nether. Oh, that's actually pretty smart. So I think we should get the materials needed for a portal and then we'll head in the nether and uh, test our luck at finding the magnetic caves. There we go. Okie dokie. I'm already moving on the map. That's how fast we go in the nether. Okay, these soul, soul vulture things, though, are the most annoying things I have ever run into. Ow. Oh, and we are already here. So, let's make our portal. There we go. Voila. Okay, we actually spawn in a negative Y level, which is interesting. So the magnetic caves are probably above us. Aha, here we go. Magnetic caves should be right in front of us this way. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh my goodness. We might have to go into this one a little bit blind to start out with. Now there's a couple of rocky roller things. Oh, th okay. Oh my God. Okay, what is going on? I... There's a lot. It's overwhelming. There's just a flying thing that was coming at me. Look at this. It dropped like an iron sword and ores. Whoa. Telecore. Tesla bulb. Hollow coder. Galenog gauntlet. Haha. <laughs> okay. Obviously, a lot of things we don't fully know about yet. Now, with these things, I'm pretty sure, yep, they hit you if you get near it. And I know for a fact they explode if you break it. I don't know if I can, like, shoot it or something. Look at that. Yeah, you do not want to be near that blast. So, I mean, I guess that can be useful if any enemies are standing next to them. But we definitely don't want to be running into them ourselves. Also, there seem to be so many, like, little things around. It's hard to even know what's an entity and what's not. Like, is that an entity? No, it's just a floating thing. Yeah, I think we need to read into how all of this works. I mean, clearly we can collect these as materials, so that's good. There's a structure which we can check out. Also, look, like, what is this? This thing is like carrying an item here. Oh, I can. I think I can hit it from here, actually. Hold on. Oh, yeah, I got something worthless. Defeat a bound droid. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot going on around us at once in this biome. Some kind of other mob there. We haven't really run into them. Oh boy. Hello. Oh boy. Okay. He, okay. It's swinging a hoe at me. Are you kidding me? Hello. Oh boy. Oh boy. Dude, this is a full on boss. Hold on. 
Look at this thing. <laughs> Looks like we obtained the heart of iron, which is pretty cool. Holy moly, though. That quickly changed. I will say there is like a shield that we can make from this biome. Resistor shield. So I guess we should do that. Do I actually have enough iron? I think I do. Let's see. We do that. And then we get... Oh, we only get one ingot from that. Oh, wow. So we need a bunch of iron. Oh, there's like a little dungeon here randomly as well. Hold on. Ow, 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 ow. What is that? It's some kind of a mob. Oh, no. Get away from me. Get away. Let's see. They did drop something. Furrow slime ball. It's like a ferocious slime ball. You need this for the Galena gauntlet, which I guess we should keep that. Look at that. There's like a little flying thing. Gotcha. You got the achievement publicity sent. Defeat a noter, which could have given away your position. I, I guess those are like little siren things in a way. Hello. Oh, 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 holy dude. I was trying to use looting on it, and it took out half of my health in two seconds. Goodbye to all of you. Yeah. There we go. I got more of these slime balls. I believe to make the gauntlet thing, we also need packed galena, which means we need to get a bunch of galena itself. Okay. Well, I'm going to mine up a bit of this because we need some. I'm just scared that uh, something's going to fall on my head while I do this. Okay, bam. Two stacks of this Galena stuff. I think we have all the materials we would need to make uh, the shield and then that gauntlet, which I figure are pretty cool items. Now, it's possible that the only place you can find these tablets is in the nether because I was reading online and it did say, like, bastion remnants. So, yeah. Look at that, though. That definitely looks <laughs> epic. There we go. Portal. Good old portal, buddy. Okay, now I'm back home where we've got our materials. I forgot to craft the nuclear bomb. Uh, I'm so smart. Okay, so the bomb. We just need two more iron blocks. Then we'll grab our other materials. Boom and bomb. Boom. Nuclear bomb. Oh boy, wait. I didn't think about the fact that if we... I hope it doesn't blow up if we start in a chest, right? It doesn't. There's no way. Okay. And then there's also like the remote that can actually detonate. So we just need three of the plate things from which we might have enough resources. Really close. I just needed one piece of toxic paper but it seems like I do not have any. So the remote will have to be done another day. Anyways, as for the resistor shield, let us make this neodymium, the scarlet version, first of all. And then we also need one more of the azure version. I like these color names. Boom. And then we have the resistor shield. Okay, I don't know if it actually works as a shield, but what we can do is test it while fighting a mob. Like, for example, here's a creeper. Oh, okay. It propelled it away. It can release a magnetic pulse on you, so I see. I wonder if it blocks after the fact, though. Here, let's test it. Oh, it does block. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. It seems like you can also bring it closer to you. And whenever I shift, it switches which direction mobs go. I can either pull. Oh, see? Look at this. It's activated as blue right now. And then if I shift, shift, right click, switches it. So blue is the one that pushes enemies away. Whoa, this is a sick shield, dude. Now it's pretty heavy to be wearing like all the time. So I'll probably only use it when we're actually fighting enemies. But wow, that's sick, man. That's an awesome addition. And then there was also the other thing we wanted to make, which was the gauntlet. Let's have a look here. So packed galena, we can make that. One, two, three, four, five five and one of these scarlet neodymium and then the telecore we already have as well so boom galena gauntlet now i'm pretty sure this can some somehow like a infinity gauntlet almost it is look at it but it seems like we need to add things to it to actually be able to use it unfortunately i don't know what those are and i won't be able to figure it out unless we read into the book okay this is cool stuff here's the deal I think what we should do is start heading towards the Forlorn Hollows because we have everything unlocked for that. And then as we get there, hopefully we'll get enough tablets to discover more about the magnetic caves. So I'll quickly decipher one of these. Bam. Forlorn Hollows Cave Codex. And then we will put it in there with paper. Boom, map. Okay, awesome. This time I will get there through the overworld so that we can collect tablets. Nope, I've checked a lot of these structures. Still no cave tablets. Oh, these might be them. I actually can't tell though. Is there a darker version? Because then it's not. Oh, there is a darker version. 
Nope, not the right ones. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, either I'm very unlucky or we do need to find those tablets in the nether. So yeah, if I find a lava pool, I'm just gonna use it to get obsidian and enter the nether. Here we are. Nether portal time. Oop. Okay. Goodness. Oh no. Oh no. I spawned in a bastion. Oh my goodness. Not the piglin brutes, dude. Those guys hurt. Okay, we have to head in this direction, so let's do it. Okay, I did actually find the area, but I'm not on any type of surface level, unfortunately. I'll just build the portal here. Bam. Okay. Let's head in and see what awaits us here. Okay, nothing yet. Let's move a bit further down here. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Um, hello. Hello. Ah! I thought it was friendly for a second. It is not. Let us read up on this real quick. Forlorn Hollows, introduction. Underground cavern system engulfed with pure darkness. Almost no light shines here. Piles of guano that litter the floor of the Forlorn Hollow can be crafted into fertilizer. The moth dust dropped by glue moths can be held down to throw over a short distance. And any creature it hits will become scent marked as a moth and will be attacked by most of the nearby Forlorn Hollow mobs. Under zeal it. Uh, we took this fella out. When they find a glue moth, they will attempt to run after it and catch it. And if they do, they will start a ritual. During this ritual, an eminence of a dark otherworldly power will briefly appear in this realm. It will focus all of its dark energy on the hapless sacrifice, warping it into a new kind of monster. And that very powerful monster, I believe, is the Forsaken. Look at this guy. 250 health. They have a sonic blast. They can fly, I think. Um, and it becomes pitch black when they're low health. I don't like the fact that we're entering a biome where a possessed uncontrollable creature who has 250 health and a sonic boom can attack us okay i'm not loving this but nevertheless we should take a look at what's going on around here oh boy ah oh dude Okay, update. In this biome, I will force myself to embrace the darkness, even though I really don't want to. As you can see, it's uh, it's not a fun experience like this, but I guess this is how we will actually experience the biome. I think the smartest thing to do is quickly head home and empty out our inventory, and then come back to, you know, hopefully survive in this biome. Time to head back. Okay, folks, we're here, and uh, I'm a little bit nervous, but <laughs> we'll see what we can do. This shield's kind of overpowered, though. Look at the damage that I'm doing to everything. Let's see what's in this little house here. Some basic loot, occult gem, and cave tablets. Oh, look at that. Okay. Don't love the idea of placing torches, but yeah, we're gonna have to do it. There's another structure! Oh! Okay, I'm not gonna lie, folks. I'm not loving this experience at all. Oh my goodness, I'm being demolished. I think because the generation in this world is a bit more extreme, the amount of mobs is very extreme in this biome. Okay, there are a lot more structures around here. More basic loot. Okay, this is all cool, but at the end of the day, the real attraction here is gonna be that big boss that has to be summoned with a ritual. I just don't know if we're ready for it yet. Look at this. There's a structure over there we can check out. What is going on over here? Oh my goodness. This looks like a ritual table, 100%. Horus Coprolith, okay. And it seems like this pure darkness is needed for a lot of the main recipes. Like you need it to make the dread bow. You need to, you need it to make the shadow silk, which is the armor. Yeah, I mean, you need it for a lot of stuff and that's only obtainable from the main boss. Oh my God. What is this? Forsaken Idol, oh boy. I'm sure it has an effect. Mothball, okay. Yeah, you can throw these. I mean, here's like the little, oh my goodness, little fortress area so unfortunately these excessive mob spawns won't really stop anytime soon i mean i'd like to see if we can get this boss summoned now we know that the kind of cult guys need to be in a huge group to summon something but i don't know if we can have any influence over that you see i can see them sometimes maybe if we kind of pull them together we can make a bigger group of them and then they'll begin a ritual so i can test that out you you know what it might be a good idea to head into the end and gear up there before we do anything here that might actually be the smartest idea i've had in these hundred days okay out of here hello mr enderman i will now need to start hunting you down 
Whoa, look at that. Lock Nether Monster. Observe a Leviathan. Wait, hold on. Observe a Leviathan through a spyglass. Okay, I looked into it. It seems like this is actually a passive mob, and you can tame it even. But in order to tame it... Hello? You are? Oh, you are nice. Okay, in order to tame it, we need like a stratolite. Let's see, tack and a stratolite saddle. We need these two things. I'm going to mark the coordinates for this fella so that hopefully... He will stay here. I have my ideas, actually. If we get to a basalt deltas biome, I believe, then we can find one of those guys that, like, throw things at us. And I'm guessing those guys will drop the material we're looking for. Aha, here we go, here we go. This is what I was looking for. Ow. Take you out, take you out. Yeah. Oh, and you dropped what I need. Perfect. Okay. Okay, five stratolites. That should be enough for what we're looking for. Now I do need two saddles and two pieces of string to finish this. I did mark down the coordinates for the Leviathan, so I guess the best thing to do is to run home, grab the materials, craft everything, and then come back. We got a little village here, Port O Magma. Approach another port. Interesting. There's actually ancient debris here too, which means it's possible for us to get ancient debris gear if we want to. Is there more? There is more. Wow. More ancient debris? Wow. There's just ancient debris scattered all throughout here. That does give me hope, though, because now I realize if we do adventuring, we'll be able to get full netherite. And I think we will end up doing that. Okay. Boom. Stratolite tack and stratolite saddle. So theoretically, that should be enough. I even got an achievement for it. Let's see if that does what we want it to do. Now, I don't know how we'll bring the Leviathan home, if we'll bring it home at all. It's more so the principle of taming it. That would be cool. Also, did I ever loot this? I don't know if I did, because I was always very afraid of the piglin brutes, and rightly so. But you know what? I'm just going to take <laughs> take my time. Oh! Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, good thing I looted that. I am very glad about my decision there. Holy moly. Okay, we're gonna need to find more of those structures. I oh, and wait, wait, wait. There's a Leviathan. Hello, hello. Okay, this Leviathan seems to be a bit strange. What I can try to do is get a fire resistance potion and then tame it while it's under there. Boom, fire resistance, and let's try to tame this leviathan. The real question is, is it still in the lava here? Hello? Unfortunately, the leviathan um, is nowhere to be seen. Okay, well, I guess we can head to that other location and see if we can find the leviathan still there. Oh yeah, the Leviathan's still here. So let's see if we can tame it by putting on these two things. One and two, boom. Okay, I mean, that means it's technically tamed. Okay, I don't know how I feel about this fella because it's very, very slow. I think it's mainly meant to be able to carry a lot of people at once. That's its strong suit. I don't think it does so well over lava. I mean, this thing looks really cool, but it is hard to travel on it. Oh, <gasps> stop. Go away, go away, go away. Oh, no. Okay, okay. We're escaping. Oh, my God. These mu mutant endermen, man, they are not a joke. Oh, and the Leviathan just fell back in the lava. Okay. You know what? We tamed the Leviathan. It's here, but I don't really want to deal with it. It is not as fast as I was hoping. Okay, so the end. Let's craft up our Eyes of Ender. Bam. I have a couple potions. I don't think we'll need that much for the Ender Dragon fight. Other than that, I feel like I'm prepared enough to take this fella on. Now, what I'm going to actually do is travel through the Nether again and go to one of the portals we created that's closer to the Stronghold. Here we go. This portal should take us pretty close within the vicinity of the stronghold. And now we will just make our way over there. Okay, finally, I've made it over here. I, I kind of figured I should have calculated through the nether and did it that way because, wow, that took a while, but at least we are here. Okay, well, the good news is there's already one Eye of Ender here, which is actually quite surprising to me. With that being said, we can make ourselves 
the completed end portal. And I could start it right away, but I do want to quickly make another portal so that we have that made. And then we can head in the end after. And perfect. Ender Dragon, here we come. Got an interesting little spawn here. And honestly, I'm not too worried about the Ender Dragon fight with everything else we've done. Although it is very dark here, I will say that much. There we go, Ender Dragon. There we go. And I'm taking out most of the crystals. I think there might be one or two left. Oh yeah, there's one in there and then there's one up there. Oh, okay, all good. Pew. I might have gotten all the crystals, so I'm just going to start firing off at the Ender Dragon. And I guess we'll find out soon if uh, there are any crystals left. Okay, finally we got her. Let's collect the XP. So that's exciting. I mean, we could go back through the portal right away, but to be honest, it might be nice to go adventuring a bit and see if we can find ourselves an Elytra, as well as some other useful things that are gonna help us in defeating these final bosses. So let's find the end gate, it's over there. Let's head in. And what is going on? We can check the structure out, see if there's anything useful. There's a shulker. There's a door here. Okay, there's a chest. I kept mending on this helmet. I don't know, maybe I can combine it with uh, one of mine to make it like a protection for breaking three mending helmet. I got a chest here, it looks like. self touch pickaxe, that could be good. I'll pick that up. And a totem of void undying, which we don't have any charms right now, so that's nice. That'll save us from dying from the void. Look at this. This is kind of nice. I didn't see this. Looks like it's just like a nice little garden. <laughs> oh, with some overpowered loot. Wow. The end is more overpowered than I thought it was. And I don't necessarily mind that. Look at how many diamonds we're getting here. Yeah, here's where our issue lies. I cannot get across here. Um, I mean, building that far, not ideal. So I guess we can also move up on the Z coordinate. And as long as we keep that number going up, we shouldn't be returning anywhere we've been, right? Oh, I see something floating. Ah, yeah, and this is a ship, so we'll check that out. <laughs> You're a shulker. Okay, let's mine inside of here. Yep, hello, hello, okay. Oh, how I hate you, fellas. You guys have no idea. Let's see what we got down here. Oh, all right. Oh, there's an elytra. Look at that. Yes, yes. Oh, mending and unbreaking already on it. Beautiful. I can't actually equip it in my back slot because I have the backpack there right now, but we can put it on our chest plate slot for now. Okay. Well, now that I have an elytra, we can get out of the end, but that feels good. And bam, perfecto. Now, the only thing is, I don't think I set my respawn point at our base before entering the end, unfortunately, so I don't know where we're gonna end up. Woo! Woo! Yeah, okay. Um, we have a little bit of a run back home, don't we? Feels good to be back home. Even though we don't necessarily have a fancy house, we got our pets and uh, you know, we got we got our memories of being here. Anyways, we've gotten one piece of the puzzle and now we just need the ancient debris. And we only need 16 pieces to upgrade all of our armor. And that's really all I want. So that means we only need three more pieces. We already have 13. That should be easy enough to find. So I say we head into the nether and do exactly that. I'm pretty excited to see what else we can find in the nether because we've been finding a lot of cool structures and maybe we should even approach some of the bastion remnants see how we do in them <laughs> maybe like that one specifically because we've seen it since our uh, arrival oh. what? why did my elytra not work oh my god oh my god the elytra doesn't work in the back slot okay okay it's fine we will recover Wait, but it does work now. Okay, this is strange. And I was noticing the same thing with my backpack where sometimes my back slot would work and sometimes it wouldn't. Cause as you can see, the elytra is working. Theoretically, my elytra works, good. Let's go, oh, great. Okay, we're grabbing the golden blocks. Oh yeah, I hear a flood of piglins. It's completely fine, I'm not worried at all. Why would I ever be worried? Found another fortress here, but I'm not too interested in looking around one of these. Uh, gold blocks don't hurt, so I'll pick these up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and I'm gone. Something over here too, look at this. It seems like a skeletal village maybe. 
We've got a couple glo golden blocks here, though, which is nice. And a chest. Nothing special inside that. Oh, we got two more of these things here, which means more enchanted golden apples, potentially. Boom, enchanted golden apple. Beautiful. And no enchanted golden apple on that one, but that's okay. Interesting little hut here, but uh, the loot isn't too good. Okay, guys, I'm trying to show off this hut, okay? Go away. Oh, don't mind me, Wither Skeleton. Just grabbing your chests. Do not mind me at all. Two Wither Skeleton skulls. Okay. Another structure here. It almost looks like a stronghold. It is. Look at this. Whoa. I've never seen this before. Interesting. I wonder if it has like a portal to the end or something. And I also wonder if it has ancient debris. We've got a library as well. Except there's no books in this one. Fair enough. Uh, there's a lectern. Ooh, here we got ancient debris. I don't know if that, oh, did it burn? Oh no, well, I'm the one who is burning. Um, yeah, there we go, I got it. Oh my goodness. Uh, I don't know if that was built into this stronghold or if that just randomly generated. Pretty random to find that on the wall. Oh, here's another one. No, I mean, I guess it's a part of this place. How much did I need? Just like three more ancient debris? And I've gotten three. That would mean that we have enough to return, I believe. Would you imagine that? We've done it. So with that, we can make four netherite ingots. And if I just craft a quick smithing table, bam, smithing table. And, oh, I forgot. We need the netherite smithing thing, but I think we got the smithing templates. There we go, netherite upgrade. And we're gonna wanna craft some more of those. We just need diamonds, no problem. Perfect. So with those created, we can upgrade our gear. Before doing that, I can combine some pieces of gear to get perfect mending pieces. So boom, we have a really nice helmet now. So I can also combine this with this and boom, we get a mending protection for chest plate. Boom, leggings, perfect. Full set. And I can repair everything as well. Okay, the final thing we should do before heading out to try and find this final boss in the Forlorn Hollows is get some more potions. Uh, yeah, there we go. There's some bottles. Boom, strength. And there we go, speed. I'm not sure of what else we could really do at this stage. I think we should just go for it and see what happens. Okay, um, well, can't say I am enjoying being in this creepy biome, but we do have a mission, which is to get the boss summoned. So all we need to do is to get flying creatures into the hands of these guys. And I guess the way to do that is to kind of crisscross the mobs together. Okay, boom, there's some bats. Oh my God, where are you guys at? I have a fresh bat here for you. Okay, I don't know if we can get uh, these guys to capture the bat somehow. Okay, can you guys catch the bat? Because this is hurting quite a lot. I'm not enjoying this process. Okay, hold on, maybe if I run off a little bit, they'll catch it by themselves. Nope, they're not catching anything. Oh. There we go, they caught a bat. Look at this, they're doing the ritual. Uh, I'm getting my potions in my inventory. Look at them worshiping this bat, dude. There it is. Oh, it's coming up. Oh, okay, potions. Look at this thing. Look at this. Okay, we need lights. I'm killing everything with the, the shield and it's eating me. Great. Good thing we have a lot of golden apples. It's not doing that much damage to me though. I'm kind of confident we're gonna get it down. There we go, Demon Slayer. That was not as bad as I thought it would be. I think we prepared really well. I did want to use our nuclear bomb, and I think I have the perfect idea for where we can use it, this cursed biome. Absolutely, so uh, let's head back and grab everything necessary, and hopefully I won't explode myself in the process. Okay, let's see. A a nuclear bomb, boom. And then we just needed one more ingredient for the remote, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we just need these polymer plates. And all we need is bottle of radon plus sulfur dust, iron, and then the toxic paste. So let's head into the toxic caves by him one more time. Okay. 
Okay, we're back. I have not missed this biome, let me tell you that much. The toxic caves are not a friendly place, no sir. Anyways, let's find some of these bugs. There they are. Look at them, little rascals. Come here. Okay, uh, with that collected, I can craft the remote on the fly here. Bam, polymer plates, and remote detonator. Hello, creeper. How you doing? You wanna blow up today? It definitely wants to blow up today. Okay, hold on. We should probably get away from it. I think it's about to explode. Oh my god. Oh my god, run. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. <laughs> I just didn't like the particles that were coming out. Okay, uh, it didn't doesn't look like it like destroyed everything, but oh, there's definitely fire left over. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm glad to be back this time. Oh yes, I am. Mwahahaha. <laughs> Look at these bats, these losers. Okay, I can't really tell you how this is gonna go. We just kinda have to do it. Um, this is uh, hopefully gonna be a beautiful sight. But if I do this, and then I shift right click that, I'm hoping it links to it or something. I don't know, we're gonna have to play this by ear here. So let me first just move away. Okay, oh boy. Um, and let's see if we can actually activate the bomb from very far away. I don't know how large the distance is going to be, so we're going to have to find out, but okay. I pressed it. It gave me an achievement. Now, trust me, guys. I, I like I want to watch it, but I also don't want to die. So where is that? Oh, okay. I'm just going to eat an enchanted golden apple in case. Okay, you guys can't blame me for that. There's literally... Okay, my world's lagging. Look at it. I think it already did the full explosion. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, look at that. Massive crater. Yeah, that feels good. How do you guys like it, huh? How do you like being attacked? I'd say that piece of our legacy is completed. Now, there remains one more thing to do, which is to head into the Abyssal Chasm biome and prepare to enter the Abyssal Chasm. Okay, we're back home. Now we did get pure darkness. I don't know how much we can make use of this. Let's see. I've got quite a lot of materials here, so it would seem that we can make the dread bow, I believe. We just need shadow silk. Let's make a decent amount of that. And then boom. Dread bow, very cool. It looks like we can also make the hood of darkness, which is awesome. Yeah, but if I get more moth dust, then we would be able to have the hood of darkness and cloak of darkness. And oh, look at that, that looks sick. Holy moly. Okay, I kind of feel like it's necessary to get it, isn't it? Okay, we need to quickly find the moths. Here we go. Alrighty, I'm getting out of here. Okay, I'm back. And with that, I should be able to craft more shadow silk and finally the cloak of darkness, bam. So with that, we have the full set. And we also have this bow, which we should test out. I believe it rains down, look at that, a huge barrage of arrows which is pretty cool. And it seems like it uh, does damage equivalent to a regular bow. I wonder if we can enchant this as well. Unbreaking, no, no. Unbreaking, yep, just only unbreaking. Okay, well, at least we got unbreaking on it. Seems like that's as powerful as it's gonna get. Hold on, I think we unlocked our ability as well. If we press G, oh, you can't use this ability in the light. Okay, hold on. If we go in the darkness, oh, look at that. <laughs> <gasps> wow. Wait, but are we actually traveling? We are, and then we float down. Look at that. Wow, this is some pretty cool gear. And it looks like we can get protection four on it, which is good news. I'm gonna wait until it recharges and then I'll return right back home. Bam, wow, this is crazy. That's overpowered. Look at this. <laughs> What? Anyways, with all that done, we have one final thing to do, which is to adventure into the Abyssal Chasm. Now, I say we equip everything we want, and then I am going to mystically travel into a new world, and there we will be able to experience the biome fully, because as it is right now, we're not able to experience it as we'd like. I guess we can take the Hood of Darkness and Cloak of Darkness with us, because these provide a pretty overpowered ability. We have some 
potions. I don't think we need any more. If we could make water breathing, that would have been great, but we can't, unfortunately. Okay, I mean, we got our enchanted golden apples, golden apples, additional armor, and everything else. I think we are good to go. Okay. Here we go. We have teleported into this new world where we can finally and hopefully experience the abyssal chasm. So I have a map here with me that should guide us to where we need to go. And I'm hoping the trip won't be too long. We should definitely make a boat. So I will do that and off we go. Oh, and folks, we are moving along on the map already. So we should start moving in this direction because according to this map, that's where we will find the abyssal Chasm. Oh yeah, here we go. I'm seeing the animals we were, or not even animals, I don't know what to call it, but the things we were seeing before. I have Dolphin's Grace, which is kind of nice. There we go, beyond the sea, enter the Abyssal Chasm. Yeah, this place is uh, a little bit freaky. Like, what is this thing? I have no clue. Calcite. Okay, it doesn't look like we can actually access whatever's inside of there. Oh boy. Now we need to find a way to get air down here. We were somehow recuperating air a moment ago, but I'm not anymore. Uh-oh. It's Shell City. I don't know what that is, but I'm more concerned about our water breathing right now. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do this. Dude, this looks insane, whatever it is. Oh my god. Look at this. What is this? I need to search up what that is. Essentially, the only way to survive out here is to make little holes like this so I can take a moment and breathe. Okay, let's read about what this mob is. My page actually reset, but I got it fixed for the Abyssal Chasm. Let's see. Maybe one of these deep ones. I think deep one mage possibly. Yeah. Have control over powerful water magic. Same opinion of outsiders. Channeling the heart of the sea buried in their heads. These deep ones can summon bolts of water to pummel enemies. So it looks like they have a lot of attacks, but uh, this mage wasn't even attacking me upon seeing it, which is interesting. <gasps> oh my God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was not ready. That's the main boss in the Abyssal Chasm. I don't think we should fight it yet. We should go away if we can. At least let me explore through this place a little bit. We have to be very careful. Let's uh, break on in. Thank goodness. Oh, and look at that. We have, what are these called again? I don't know. It's like an aqua tank. You know what I mean? Captain Nemo. Hold on. This Hi, submarine. That's what it is. Okay, that's good and all. I do wonder if there are any chests to loot here, though. Oh, yeah. There's some metal barrels. There we go. A pearl. Uh, we also got a diving helmet. And I don't know how many pieces we need for all the effects. Looks like that's already giving me water breathing, which is nice. The leggings seem to give you swim speed. Maybe we might just be good with the helmet, though. That's a good find. Okay, let's try to get this thing out of here. Maybe we can break out the platform from below. There we go. Doesn't seem to be working too well. There we are. Let's see if that's enough to get us out of here. Okay, got out. It's oddly silent here. Like, you get an occasional sound, but other than that, it is just pure silence. Okay, let's see if we can find any deep ones, because now that we have pearls, I believe that we can trade with them. Like, here we go. We have one of them. Hello? If I offer this guy a pearl, does he do anything? No. What? What's going on with you, pal? Hey, you blinded me. Oh boy. Yeah, so in order to trade, there's a certain process we'd need to do. Let's read about it real quick. So placing a pearl on an abyssal altar near them can initiate an exchange of goods, which will gradually improve the opinion of deep ones. Eventually, they may no longer flee and assist in combat. So where can we get an abyssal altar is the question. It looks like we might be able to make one. In that case, we might want to craft one so that we can take it with us. And the recipe is not that difficult. So we should just be able to go like this. Boom, this will alter. And then let's see if we go to one of these guys and we place this here and then a pearl. Let's see if that attracts anybody. Hello. Oh, yeah, he picked it up. Hey, are we trading and understanding? Oh, look at this. He gave us a little fish. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the raw salmon, my friend. So, I mean, if we do that enough times, we would get into a good enough standing to where they'll help us in combat. The only thing is, I don't know how we can get a bunch more of those pearls. Wait, these are pearls. Okay, right. So if we just break these little things everywhere, we can get a bunch of pearls that way and then we can trade as much as we want. Would you like to trade, sir? I will place this in a pearl. Wow, that's a pretty terrifying face. I hope it's going for the pearl and not me. Okay, good. 
Good, 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 good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what is that? Don't know, but there we go. There's another one. Hollow bone block. Okay. I mean, not what we wanted, but cool, I guess. This guy's kind of derpy with how he moves around. Oh, nautical neighbors. They now regard you with neutrality. Okay, so we're just going to keep doing this until they are really friendly. All buddies now. Oh, become so well regarded that they occasionally come to your defense. How nice is that? <laughs> I'm not sure if we can go above that because that was an epic achievement. So, I mean, at this point, all we really have left to do is to fight the final boss, which is the hull breaker. Yeah, it quickly makes a kill by using its massive teeth. The easiest way to avoid the wandering eyes is to stop emitting light and to remove any glowing effect or entity. It's time to go out and try to defeat the hull breaker. So I'm going to try to find it. I mean, We've seen it around a couple of times. It shouldn't take too long. Oh, and we have our submarine here, which is perfect because I can use that to get around. Oh yeah, I really like the addition of this thing. Oh, <laughs> there it is. I can't tell if it's approaching me or not. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna drink my potion, which I can do in here, luckily. We need our enchanted golden apples, shield, and okay, I'm probably gonna try to just put on our netherite helmet while we fight this thing. So let's do that. And let me see, can I like attack this fella from here? Look at it, it's looking at us. Oh God, oh God, okay, okay. I don't think fighting it from there is a good idea. So I'm gonna get out, let's go. Wow, it does so much damage, man. It does a lot of damage. Okay, it already broke my shield, great. But the deep ones are helping me. Look at them go. Go, go, go. Get them, guys. Oh, my God. The amount of damage this thing does, dude. I'm on my last enchanted golden apple already. Go, 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 go. Just damage. Oh, we got it. We got it. That was the most anticlimactic death ever. These deep ones, I think, are literally the reason why we were able to get it. Wait, did it drop anything? That's a little bit strange, wouldn't we say? There's literally, like, no loot. Wow. Woo, that's it, everybody. We did it. 